Hello everybody, hope this video finds you well. Right, so I thought we would um, go back to a little bit of traditional drawing and have a go at doing a little bit of portraiture, okay? Uh, now, how would I start? So, um, what I would do if I was starting to do a portrait, I would draw an egg shape, upside down egg shape. Now this shape, Will need to be revised later so I would draw it gently I'm obviously pressing down quite hard so you can see what I'm doing but um, yeah when you're doing it maybe draw lightly what you can do then is you can start to um, add your a line of symmetry and then just just above halfway height draw in a line this is where your eyes are going to be halfway between there and there is approximately where your nose is going to be Halfway between there and there is where your lips are going to be, okay? Now what you could do, you could actually not worry about this shape and just draw this. It all depends on how your brain works and uh, whether you are happy just drawing the grid without the actual shape on the outside. Now the next thing I would put in after that would be the eyes. Now the eyes are really useful for working out how wide the head is because your face is supposed to be five eyes wide so then you can say okay so that is a an eye width I'm going to measure and get five eyes along there so my head I can see is going to have to be a little bit wider and again I think it needs to be just just a little bit a little bit wider here okay uh, right, okay, now interestingly, this area, the centre of the bridge of your nose to the outside of your eye is supposed to be the same distance as from here to the bottom of your nose. So if I measure that and bring it there, then that, that works quite nicely. That is the bottom of my nose, so you could technically, you could actually draw a sort of triangle in there and make sure that that distance is okay. That's quite reassuring. Okay, now interestingly, this distance from here to here is also supposed to be that distance there. So, you know, just out of curiosity, check it on yourself and see if it's true. That's quite useful it, to know if you are actually uh, doing a portrait and you are um, a self-portrait looking in the mirror and you're actually trying to do it to scale, it's, it's worth knowing that that distance is that distance from there to there. Okay, but good, good to measure as well. Right, okay, so... That is uh, making sure that the width of my head and the length of this area here is okay. Right, so what we need, we need some eyes. Now, I have my skull here and I have my eye sockets, which are sort of roughly round about there. On the top of my eye sockets, I will have my eyebrow. Okay, have a look to see whereabouts it starts, what shape is it. Uh, you probably pluck them, Jim. So, um, <laughs> you uh, you know, is is the high point here? Is it is it right over here? What sort of shape are they? So you can work out where your eyebrows need to go. Now your eyes in this area here. I'm actually going to turn over and draw it nice and big so you can see. So here's my nose and my eyebrow. Okay, so have a look at the shape of your eye imagine a horizontal line cutting through the bottom of your tear duct and then what happens there is this point where your two lids meet is it a lot higher than that line is it on that line it's highly unlikely to be lower but have a look to see whereabouts it is which is the lowest part here? Is it actually your tear duct or does your eye, this main bit here, does that actually then come below? So have a look, work out where that line is and have a look whereabouts it goes. Now I think on me, I think that the tear duct is actually the lowest part and my eye goes up like so. Now um, I've noticed whenever I draw myself, when I look at my iris, that my iris tucks behind the top lid but usually, unless I'm pulling a silly face, just sits on my bottom lid. 
not everyone's the same. I have noticed when I've uh, been doing portraits that some people, that the bottom of their iris goes behind their, their lid. But for me, anyway, it sits there and it goes behind the top. And then your pupil is obviously going to be bang in the middle. Okay. I have my... Uh, a crease that goes along here depending on you on how old you are depends on what's going on and I've got a little bit of extra skin here saggy saggy eyebrows eyelids what a shame um okay and then you also need to think about your eyelashes so you need to really look to see what direction your eyelashes are going in some of you they might just be coming down and they might be cutting over your eyelid. Some of some of you, they might come down and then they might go up. Now, obviously, you're not going to be drawing an eye as big as this. Yours is, is perhaps going to be sort of this shape. So you might just be able to put in a little bit of shading to represent your eyelashes. You're not going to be trying to add individual, individual lashes. It might just be an area of shading. So do bear that in mind. You've also got the bottom, the continuation of your eye socket where you might have some laughter lines at the side and things like that. So really have a good look and um, yeah, look at sort of how your lashes are growing. Okay, All right, back to this side. So let, let me give myself an eye. So just quickly draw, draw that in like so. My nose comes down. So the bottom of your nose is, if you will imagine a point, pointy triangle, like a tie, bottom of a tie, but then you give it a, a round bit. And then you have your nostrils, the outside of your nostrils there, and then the inside of your nostrils. So have a look to see what, what shape they are and how much lower this point is to this point. Pretty much depends on the angle of your head but have a look and what you can actually do to make sure your nose is in the right place we've already established that it's the right length because it's that distance what you can do is you can check it by drawing um, vertical lines up here um, to see where everything lines up with your eye so generally this bit here is supposed to line up with the inside of your eye okay the outside of your nostril, they say, lines up with the inside of your iris. And when it comes to drawing your your lips, they say that the, the lips, if your face is relaxed and you're not pulling a face or smiling or anything like that, your lips are as wide as the, in, the middle of your eye. So these are all things that you can think about when you're doing your drawing. That's the general rule, does my face apply to that? A lot of you will find that some of these things really don't apply to yourself, but um, by checking them, by studying, it helps you unpick all that visual information that is on the face. Okay. So then what you might want to do is actually check on the shape of your face. I haven't got an egg-shaped face like that. I've got my cheekbones a little bit jowly here and then my chin comes down like so what about your ears your ears are generally they start off where your eyes are and they will finish where your nose is that's if you're sort of full on to the mirror looking straight at eye level obviously if you have your chin elevated or your chin down into your chest then that is going to affect where all your features are but if you straight on generally that's the sort of thing you're looking at. Your neck, it's really easy to give yourself a skinny neck. If you have a look, the neck is actually used, usually in line with the outside of your eye. So have a look at that. And then you've got your, your clothes and your shoulders are supposed to be two heads wide. So I can see, using my pencil to measure, that my, the edge of my shoulders will be right off the page. Okay, I think I need some hair. Let me just draw my other ear in. Oops, that's it, that's it there, isn't it? Okay, so what you do need to remember, and it's quite a common mistake when people do portraits, what they do is they use this shape as 
the, the top of the hair. This is, if you imagine your jawline going into the top of your skull, your hair grows on top of your skull. So um, what you will find is you need to give yourself that, that extra hair on the top of your head, otherwise it'll look like you've chopped the top of your head off. Okay, so I've got a fringe that sort of comes down. My hair sort of goes across here and this will come down here. Obviously hairlines are different, I've got quite a high hairline so I do have uh, quite a big gap here but some people their hair might actually start a little bit lower down so have a look to see what applies to you and actually where it goes. got a bit of a bob thing going on at the minute because my hair needs cutting. Right let's just get another, another eye in. Obviously I'm brushing this so do, do bear that in mind, you'll be spending much longer on it, concentrating on get, getting everything in the right place. Oh, that eye's terrible. Okay, right. Okay, so that's what I'd like you to have a go at today. Have a go at um, a self-portrait. I would suggest in pencil, but feel free to use any medium you like. Maybe if you enjoy it and it doesn't take you very long, maybe you could draw, maybe you can persuade somebody else to sit for you and uh, draw them as well and see how these rules are different on the other person to uh, yourself. It'd be interesting to see. And don't forget to share what you do with me because I'd love to see them. Okay, right. And we'll do another portrait next week, um, but we'll do it very differently. So it won't be like repeating the same thing. Right, okay. Take care, everybody. Goodbye.